Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And summertime is starting to fade here in the Northern Hemisphere. Kids are going back to school and college, and it's all very depressing or very exciting, depending on your point of view. The good thing about the end of summer is that from a news perspective, stuff tends to be a bit more active, and so we've got lots of stuff to cover. So let's get into this week's latest dev news. So first up, we are less than three months away from Microsoft Ignite in Orlando. And this year, Microsoft Ignite will actually be the first week of November. So that's November 4th through 8th, which which hopefully will get us kind of out of the hurricane season a little bit more. And uh, this is one of our biggest events of the year with tons of content for IT pros as well as developers. And I'm going to be there along with lots of uh, your Channel 9 favorites, and we would love to see you there too. And so registration is now open, and you can get more information and register at uh, a link that I've got in the show notes and the description down below. Next up, it seems like it was just yesterday or like a couple weeks ago, the .NET Core Preview 7 was released, but now Preview 8 is out. And as Rich Lander explains on the .NET blog, there aren't a lot of changes in .NET Core 3.0 Preview 8 because these last few releases are all about polishing um, everything up for the final release, not adding new features. And as we've discussed before, .NET Core 3.0 is a major release, and, and we've been talking about this for, for a really long time, and I'm super excited to see it get closer and closer sort of the finish line. Now, you can use .NET Core 3.0 Preview 8 in production. The, the team strongly recommends testing the app before deploying first. And I've got a link in the show notes to the latest rele no release notes, the GitHub release, and more information. Next up, Visual Studio version 16.3 Preview 2 and Visual Studio for Mac uh, version 8.3 Preview 2 are available now. And a lot of the changes in Preview 2 are in response to feedback from the developer community. And both versions can be downloaded from visualstudio.com. And I've got direct links in the description and show notes down below so that you can do just that. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on all the new stuff, but I do want to call out a new Visual Studio Containers Tools option that makes it really easy to add Docker container support to um, developers' C Sharp projects when they're using Azure Functions. And on the Xamarin side, the Xamarin team has a blog post on all the new Xamarin stuff in both of these previews. So I've got a link to that blog post too in the show notes and the description. In some command line news, Craig Lowen published the third part in his uh, trilogy on WSL, that's the Windows subsystem for Linux, and Linux development using VS Code. And this time, he focuses on some tips and tricks. And if you haven't used WSL and the VS Code remote extensions, you should read uh, Craig's blog and then give it a try. It's awesome. Speaking of VS Code, over on Dev.2, a user who goes by the name of Lamp Web Dev has a really nice guide to various VS Code shortcuts to make you more productive. And so I've included a link to Lamp Web Dev's guide in the show notes and description. Thanks so much for writing that. And uh, I, I also want to give a shout out to my pal Shane Boyer because on his blog, he has a blog post about how open source projects can add VS Code extension recommendations to their projects. And so the idea would be that if someone clones your repo in a new workspace, they get recommendations of what extensions they might want to add and use, which is really great. And so a link to Shane's blog is in the description down below, and he's got all the details about how you can get up and running with that. In some PowerShell core news, John, one of the PowerShell interns, has added a much requested feature to PowerShell core for Mac, Linux, and of course, Windows. And that is support for outgrid view, um, which is a commandlet. And using the graphical tools module, outgrid view lets you visualize objects returned by PowerShell. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm a new PowerShell user, so I've never heard of this commandlet. But after looking at some of the examples, I love what it can do, and it's super exciting that it is now available. And and so it links to John's blog post with the installation instructions, as well as the uh, GitHub repo for graphical tools, is in the show notes and description. Last week, we talked about the new updates uh, coming to GitHub Actions, which are currently in preview and will go live later this fall. Well, this week, I want to share the news of a new preview for GitHub Actions for Azure. And so with these new actions, developers can quickly build, test, and deploy code from GitHub repositories directly to the cloud using Azure. And so these actions make it super easy to automate tasks like connecting to Azure or deploying a web app to Azure App Service and deploying to Kubernetes. 
And um, the team says that over the next few months, they are going to continue improving um, these available actions, and they will also release new ones to cover more Azure services. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that pans out. And so I've got a link to the blog post as well as the GitHub repo with these GitHub options, um, and those are in the show notes in the description. At Microsoft Build back in May, the Microsoft Edge team talked about the new WebView 2 control that's powered by the new Chromium-based Microsoft Edge browser. And so the idea behind that is that you can have a WebView control in your own apps. And so work on WebView 2 continues, and the SDK is being updated every six weeks. But now the team has published a sample called WebView 2 Browser on GitHub to demonstrate the new WebView's capabilities. And the sample features an array of functionalities, including navigation, search from the address bar, tabs, favorites, history, and verifying a secure connection. And so I've got a link to the sample on GitHub, the documentation around WebView 2, and a getting started guide if you want to start experimenting with building new WebView 2 stuff into your own apps. And all that stuff is linked down below. On Channel 9 this week, we've got a lot of great content. First up is the premiere of a brand new show called The Cloud Native Show. And uh, Shane Boyer is joined by Brendan Burns to answer the question, what is Cloud Native, really? Then on the AI show, Seth shows off the Azure Anomaly Detector. And finally, on the IoT show, Olivier looks at how you can train um, different models using Azure ML and then deploy everywhere using the ONNX runtime. Links to all those videos are in the show notes down below. And now it is time for my pick of the week. Okay, so I'm going to be honest and say that I was a little bit too young for the late 80s slash early 90s world of zines, which were basically blogs in a pre-World uh, Wide Web era. But I love discovering old tech zines nonetheless. And it seems that I'm not alone because programmer uh, Jin Bell Coldwind, and I, I apologize if I said that incorrectly, uh, has just launched a new experimental zine which is called Paged Out. And Paged Out is a new experimental, and, and this is a zine where one article equals one page, and it's a free magazine about programming, especially programming tricks. It has stuff on hacking, security hacking, retro computers, modern computers, electronics, the demo scene, and other topics. I love it, it's so cool. And so I've got a link to the first issue in the show notes down below. I really, really hope that this project keeps going and that more people do stuff like this, because it's really fun to see, especially for people like me who don't really remember zines. And I can only imagine for people who are like, what's a zine, I have no idea. Let me know your favorite computer magazines or zines from back in the day in the comments, or your thoughts on any of our other stories. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and go ahead and subscribe to our channel, Microsoft Developer, for all your nerd needs. See you next time.